Radio waves are thought of in one of two different forms, either as waves or as particles. Which one depends on what scientific principle you're trying to prove? Radio waves propagating through air are best thought of in terms of waves, as we have been discussing here. RF can travel through many environments, such as air, the vacuum of space, walls. They just don't travel well through very dense materials, such as concrete, water, dirt, or metal. With that in mind, different frequencies of radio waves behave differently as they travel through the air. Surface waves, also called ground waves, are in effect for AM broadcasting. This is where the radio waves follow the curvature of the Earth and are capable of traveling great distances. This only works with low frequency radio waves, up to about 3 megahertz. Often you will see AM towers at the water's edge on a lake or bay. The moist ground and the nearby water makes for a very conductive ground plane, which is important for AM broadcasting. Low frequencies tend to follow the curvature of the Earth as they travel, so a low resistance connection to the Earth is very important at the transmitter site. Then there's line of sight, where the RF waves travel in a straight line, and the transmitting and receiving antennas must be able to see each other with no obstacles in the way. The limiting factor for line of sight is the curvature of the Earth's surface. The point at which the signal can no longer be received is called the radio horizon. The radio horizon can be extended somewhat by elevating either or both antennas. This is one reason antennas are positioned on top of hills and mountains. Atmospheric conditions affect the way in which radio waves propagate through the air. Heavy rain can absorb certain high frequency radio waves because their short wavelengths allow them to be absorbed by large rain droplets. Microwave links in the 23 gigahertz band can fade out totally during times of heavy rain, for example. Certain frequencies of radio waves are capable of bouncing off the ionosphere. This can extend their range by quite a bit. The ionosphere's height is affected by the solar winds, and during the night the solar winds pass around the Earth and pull out on the atmosphere, thus raising the ionosphere. Some materials absorb radio waves, while others reflect or refract them. All can cause problems when trying to receive an RF signal. Foliage tends to absorb radio waves. In fact, an antenna that once received a perfectly good signal may experience a signal loss as trees grow in front of it. Tall buildings tend to reflect radio waves, causing them to scatter in various directions sometimes extending the range of the broadcast and sometimes interfering with it. Another important factor in the propagation of radio waves is path loss. As a signal moves further from its source, the intensity or signal strength is reduced. In fact, for every doubling of distance traveled, the signal strength is reduced to one quarter. In general, lower frequencies travel further than high frequencies. As mentioned earlier, RF signals have a polarity, or orientation, relative to the transmitting antenna. The position of the antenna to the Earth's surface determines the orientation of linearly polarized radio waves by matching the receive antenna's orientation to the polarity of the transmitted signal a higher received signal strength will be achieved when the transmitting and receive antennas are at cross poles meaning they are of opposite polarities 
the received signal is reduced. While traveling through the atmosphere, radio waves can have their polarity altered or shifted. An RF signal's polarity may become tilted by several degrees, making it harder to be received since it no longer matches the orientation of the receive antenna. To reduce this effect, some broadcasters transmit both horizontal and vertically polarized radio waves. This is called circular polarity when both power levels are equal. Sometimes it's the desired RF signal itself that causes the interference. A transmitted RF signal can bounce off walls and buildings and reach the receive antenna from a different angle and at a different time compared to the direct signal. This is called multipath interference. Because of the different paths the two signals take, they arrive at different times. Multipath is the cause of many RF reception problems. This has been an overview of what radio waves are and how they travel and some of the obstacles they encounter on their way from the transmit antenna to the receive antenna.